Okay, so literally, if the judge rules, we will have no more buyer's agents and real estate commissions will be cut in half. So let's jump into what I'm saying, the, the lawsuit that could change the real estate industry literally forever. I mean, this is absolutely has such huge implications. And if you don't know what's happening, I hope that after this video, this brings you some awareness. So in 2019, home sellers, plaintiffs, John Sitzer and Amy Winger filed a lawsuit against the National Association of Realtors and real estate franchise Reology, which they own a bunch of different brands, Home Services of America, which is Berkshire Hathaway, Remax, and Keller Williams alleging the sharing of commissions between listing agents and buyer brokers violates the Sherman Antitrust Act by inflating sellers' costs. I'm going to explain this in just a second. So the suit, like a bigger federal uh, case in Illinois, brought by Chris Morrill, I've done videos about that lawsuit uh, before, seeks to have home buyers, listen closely, home buyers pay their broker or their agent directly rather than having the listing brokers pay buyer brokers from what the seller pays the listing broker. Okay, so that's what the suit's all about. In other words, uh, the this lawsuit suggests or is fighting that listing or, or that the seller rather should not have to offer a buyer agent commission and in fact should not pay a buyer's agent commission. So in addition to that, the Biden administration is also fighting to lower commissions. A report put out by the Wall Street Journal said the Justice Department is investigating home sale commissions. In a wide-ranging executive order, President Biden asked the Federal Trade Commission to adopt rules to address unfair or exclusionary practices in the real estate industry. Several civil lawsuits, okay, this is what we're talking about here, uh, uh, challenging industry rules and practices around commissions have have survived initial um, procedural challenges, but that change, I'm going to talk about that in a second as well, and drawn support from the Justice Department. So here's what's interesting. So NAR and the defendants that I just named, Keller Williams, Remax, Reology, and Berkshire Hathaway, this week was a massive, massive blow. And I'm going to talk about what I believe that could happen if there are no more buyer's agents and real estate commissions go from 6% to 3%, what impact that would have. I'm going to do that here in just a few more minutes. So um, this week specifically, that's what prompted me to make this video. The federal commission suit now is a class action. And this is massive, you guys. And so when it's a class action, here's the implications of that. All right. So days after oral arguments, a judge on Friday granted class certification um, in, in one of two federal commission suits, which is this one. So here's what this means. So it says, in a major blow to the National Association of Realtors and major real estate franchisers, hundreds of thousands of home sellers can ask to be reimbursed for more than $1 billion paid in commissions uh, that they gave to buyer's agents in the past eight years. This is crazy. Court already ruled on that Friday. So not great. Uh, not great at all for, for NAR or for the real estate industry, depending on how you look at this. And I'm going to give you my perspective, but I'm telling you, and I've, I've told all my coaching clients the same thing. There's a high likelihood that the real estate industry could lose this suit and the way real estate gets done in the United States of America is changed forever like it is in other countries. So that's what's being argued in court right now, which is the value of the buyer's agent. So let me explain to you what other countries do and what the the, the attorneys for the, uh, the plaintiffs, here's the argument that they're making. So they talk about why is the role of the buyer agent key? So both sides are, are, are arguing this. So it says in order to help the judge determined the impact of the buyer broker commission rule. The plaintiffs and defendants each had an expert testify regarding what the real estate market would be like uh, for, uh, but for that rule in the absence of that rule. Okay, so here's what, what happened. So one of the attorneys reported they looked at six other countries 
that don't have a buyer broker commission rule. So this is the UK, the Netherlands, Belgium, Singapore, Australia, Germany, and uh, those are those are just some. There's some others that they didn't even mention in here. But in Australia, one of the attorneys said buyers pay their agents, and as a result, only one to five percent of transactions involve involve a buy side agent because none of those six countries require it. Sellers in those countries don't routinely pay buyer side agents. So this attorney says it was my conclusion that on the key issue of injury, that absent the rule in the US, if it had never existed, listen closely, sellers would not pay buyer agent commissions, which it's hard to argue that, right? And so he's saying, listen, in all these other countries, there's one agent, the seller pays for their agent, there isn't a buy side uh, agent at all involved, and that one agent handles the entire transaction, and as a, as a byproduct of this, the seller uh, this help, this is better for the seller. So here's my argument. All right. So commissions are paid number one to the listing broker to sell the house. All right. So we all know that. Well, at the time of a listing, it's really unknown. It's impossible to know how the buyer for that property is going to be procured. Like we don't know. It's not like the listing agent has a conversation with the seller and says, okay, there's a hundred percent chance that there's going to be a buyer agent involved. And therefore, we have to offer a commission. No, that's not what happens. Whatever the commission is, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 10%, 2%, 3%, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, that is what the seller agrees to pay the listing broker and the listing agent to sell the property by any means necessary. And so that's, I think, one thing that the plaintiffs in this lawsuit is missing. It's not that... We know that a buyer agent is going to be involved at all. And in many cases, they aren't. And so the thing is, what I wrote here is that sellers, they don't have any issue with the compensation up front. So when they agree to pay their agent to list and sell the home for 5 or 6 or 7%, they have no problem. This lawsuit is a byproduct of what happens when a buyer agent gets involved with the transaction after the fact. So that's the part that I think the lawsuit's missing is that wait a minute, Mr. Seller, you had no problem paying your agent 6% to sell the house with their marketing and, and, and their efforts. It's only when another agent got involved that you had a you had problems with it being 6%. So, you know, I guess the argument that I would make is, what if there was no other agent involved? Would this lawsuit, and, and the commissions was still 6%, would the seller still be angry? I don't know. So let's, furthermore, Buyer agents are better for consumer protection, okay? So if I'm an attorney and I'm arguing in this lawsuit, buyers that have representation, well, it's better for the that consumer. And here's the interesting thing. If, this, if there was only the seller's agent, right? Just the agent representing the seller, buyers would have to go unrepresented, which they do in all these other countries, which I'm shocked that the attorneys for NAR and these other companies haven't brought this up yet. If the Justice Department's goal is to protect the consumer, how would they be doing this by getting rid of their representation that they get today with a buyer's agent? Because every buyer from this point moving forward, if this, if the uh, judge rules in the plaintiff's favor and there's no buyer's agents in the US any longer, I just don't understand how that would be better for the buyer uh, when this is the class of people that the Justice Department is supposedly looking to protect. I'm sure it will come up at some point. So here's the impact. This is from my perspective. If we only had one agent in the US, and that was the agent that represented the seller, commissions got cut directly in half, and it was 3% commission, one agent involved. For listing agents, really, I think it's better. Uh, I think that the listing agent will have more control over the transaction because if the buyers are coming to you directly and you are the listing agent that res represents this property that you're selling and there's no other agent involved, there's a lot more control and there's a lot more transparency that that agent has to communicate to the seller. So from that standpoint, for listing agents, I think it's way better. There's no impact for a listing agent. That's why I spend my entire career coaching and training real estate agents like yourself on how to build a listing-based business. So for all of you that are listing agents, I don't think the impact would be that great. 
for sellers, I mean, this will probably be con uh, controversial. I'll probably get a lot of pushback in the comments in this video. That's okay. I honestly believe that this would be better for sellers like the other countries because you're hiring your agent to sell the home. The seller's expectation is that you, the listing agent, is going to be the one to sell the home. They don't expect another agent to sell the home. And so therefore, I mean, if this was actually what's happening, it would be better for the seller. There's only one agent. It's half the commission. They net more money. They'd only be doing with one agent, not two agents. That Their agent would control the entire process, the lending process, the inspection process, the appraisal process, the negotiation process. So it's hard to argue why it would be worse for sellers. I think it'd be better for sellers, uh, worse for buyers. I already talked about that. But I think if this happens, it's going to be much, much, much worse for buyers. They're going to have no representation. And now, not only do they not have representation, they're dealing with the person who works for the seller. So it, it's, it's a lot worse for buyers. The real estate industry as a whole, this is the big one. I think that this is much better for the real estate industry. And why would I say that? Because I, I think a lot of people, when, I, when you guys hear me say that, probably maybe it upsets you, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. My perspective is that it helps the industry because commissions that get cut in half equals a lot less agents in the industry because there's going to be a lot less brokerages. If you look at how most agents do their business today, most teams, most brokerages, they're 70, 80% buyer heavy, meaning all their business, all their revenue, all their income comes from buyer representation compensation, buyer agent commission. If that was gone, the, the catastrophic impact that would have on the industry from the standpoint of all these companies that rely almost entirely on buyer agent commissions, they would be gone. And so there'd be a lot less competition. The only people that would be left in the industry would be listing agents, the ones that market the property, have the resources to market properties, have the expertise to market properties. And so I think that'd be a great thing for the industry because it's a great thing for the consumer. Number two, higher barrier, barrier to entry. So it'd be a lot difficult, a lot more difficult to get into the trans, into the into the industry. Why do I say that? Because if you look at the way that most new agents generate clients in the beginning, what are they doing? They're holding open houses for top agents listings, right? That's what they're doing. So if that's the case and they because they would get pay, paid a buyer agent commission, that would be gone. And so it'd be a lot difficult, a lot more difficult for, for newer agents to get into the business, which again, I would argue is good for the industry. Having too many agents and, and people that are not experts, it hurts the realtor's brand. And so I think this is really good from that standpoint. And then here's the other thing. Agents, they, they waste so much time showing houses to buyers and working for free. That would go away. Like you probably watching this video, how, how many times have you shown a house to buyers for months and months and months and months? They end up buying a house without you or deciding not to buy, and you worked for free. All of that would go away. Uh, it'd be all about listing property, and here is the big one for me. Buyer lead generation companies and teams would be potentially out of business overnight. So think about this, think about this for a second. Think about Zillow, think about realtor.com. 90 something percent of their revenue comes through selling buyer leads to realtors like you and I. If there are no buyer agent commissions, um, well, that'd be interesting because how would they make any revenue? I mean, this would completely disrupt that entire business model. That's number one. Number two, look at all the teams out there that are 100% dependent on buying internet buyer leads for their team. I mean, those teams would be gone. I mean, I interview top team leaders all the time where 70, 80% of their business comes through internet lead generation, 70, 80% on the buy side. I mean, that would be all gone overnight. And so again, it'd just be a cleansing of the industry, I believe. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. So the next thing you should do if you want, I made a video uh, talking about this case in much greater detail. You can click this video right here to check it out.